Good morning, this is Mission Control Houston. It's launch day, and on your screen is a live look at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island in Virginia. Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket is getting ready for liftoff from launch pad 0A to kick off a cargo resupply mission carried out by Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft. Launch is expected in less than 30 minutes from now at 427 and 42 seconds a.m. Central, 527 and 42 seconds a.m. Eastern with a five-minute launch window. So far, everything's on track for an on-time launch. This is the second launch attempt for this uncrewed mission. Yesterday, during the final minutes of the countdown, a fire alarm sounded at the Northrop Grumman Cygnus Control Center in Dulles, Virginia, causing the team to have to evacuate the building. The team was responsible for monitoring Cygnus during launch and ultimately taking control of the spacecraft once the spacecraft separated from the solid rocket motor second stage about nine minutes after liftoff. Uh, yesterday, the team was not tracking any issues with the Cygnus spacecraft, the Antares rocket, ground communication systems, weather, anything like that. Speaking of weather, for this launch attempt, the weather is forecast to be 80% favorable, so there's a very low probability of violation due to weather. Temperatures at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility are in the mid-60s, and weather officers don't expect weather to be any kind of constraint on today's launch. While today's Antares launch will put on a light show for some of the eastern seaboard, should be visible in the states surrounding the mid-Atlantic region, uh, the Cygnus vehicle up top is the spacecraft making its way to the International Space Station today. Uh, you can see it just inside the fairing there on the other side of that American flag towards the top of the rocket. It's carrying 8,200 pounds of scientific experiments, food, hardware, and supplies to the people living aboard the International Space Station. And the Antares rocket is below. And we'll get into some of the launch milestones and Terry's will go through in just a minute. The mission we're talking about today is Northrop Grumman's 18th Commercial Resupply Services mission for NASA. And after today's launch, Cygnus will travel on a two-day journey to the International Space Station. It'll be robotically captured at approximately 4.05 a.m. Central Time, 5.05 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, November 9th at the hands of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, backed up by NASA astronaut Josh Cassida, both inside the robotic workstation in the seven-window cupola. And Ops 1, Step 393, activate arm and naval. Man will use the Canadarm robotic arm to grapple Cygnus and then turn over operations to robotic specialists here on in Mission Control who will bolt it into place on the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module. ADM's armed. Ops 2, set Stage 1 controller EPV b -breaths. Yep. And it worked. Cygnus began its journey in Dulles, Virginia. From there, it traveled to NASA's Wallops Flight Facility to be mated with the service module that holds the spacecraft solar arrays. It then traveled to nearby Wallops Island for fuel and integration with the Antares rocket in the horizontal integration facility, also known as the HIF. The rocket and spacecraft traveled horizontally to launch pad 0A on Wednesday, November 2nd. Some beautiful shots of it on its way to the launch pad there. Uh, 
uh, LC stage one on continent. Yeah, can you provide status of cold helium bottle supply pressure? Uh, stand by, we're still evaluating. While the bulk of the cargo was loaded ahead of time, some more time-sensitive late-load cargo was brought in at the launch pad. Um, at pad 0A, Antares is raised vertically, a process that takes about 30 minutes or less uh, for a combined system test. It was put back into the horizontal position Thursday night to allow for the late-load cargo. A pop top on the nose cone creates an opening and a mobile payload processing facility is used to put cargo in 24 hours before launch. That's the box in the biggest photo um, towards the left. This could include scientific experiments um, or even fresh fruits and veggies from the local community stowed for the astronauts. LC stage one on countdown. Go ahead, stage one. Uh, helium topping is not required. Copy that, stage one. Check step 391, 392 not required. Northrop Grumman has a history of naming its Cygnus spacecraft after a pioneer of human spaceflight. The Cygnus spacecraft launching today is named the SS Sally Ride. Dr. Ride was a NASA astronaut and physicist. She was the first American woman to fly to space, kicking off her spacefaring career during the STS-7 mission. She was also a crew member of STS-41G in 1984. Both spacecrafts occurred on Space Shuttle Challenger. An advocate for student outreach, she co-led the creation of the Earth Cam, where students can control a camera outside of the International Space Station to take photographs of the Earth. The program is still operational today. There's no doubt her pursuit of exploration made a mark on human history with her legacy with her legacy still ongoing today. We're now just 20 minutes away from launch. The majority of the cargo launching aboard the SS Sally ride is supplies for the people living in orbit, but Cygnus is also carrying nearly 2,000 pounds of scientific experiments. These will directly support dozens of the more than 250 science and research investigations that will occur during Expedition 68. Shortly after launch, we'll get some more details on how this mission will support upcoming spacewalks outside of the space station for future IROSA solar array deployment uh, from NASA's Jeff Arend. Until then, let's take a look at some of the science experiments on board Cygnus launching to the International Space Station today. Yeah, I'd like to fly.
LC prop lead 397, actual F1 level is 11 out of 11, and prop 2 is monitoring. Flight control teams are taking a look at the Antares', Antares onboard systems and plan to go into a five minute hold at the L minus 11 minute mark at 10 at 4.16.43, which would lead us to a new T minus zero time of 4.32.42 central time towards the end of the launch window. Copy, I'll see you in work. LC Core 1, Countdown 1. Go ahead, Core 1. Uh, step 399, fuel adjustment is not required. Copy that, Core 1. And Prop 2, arm OCCS for no adjustment to fuel level. And LC Prop 2, OCCS, ACDC is armed. ACDC confirmed. So we're heading into the final stretch of the launch countdown, again with a planned hold at L minus 11 minutes. Uh, we do have a guest from Northrop Grumman with us here today, Christina Halona. Uh, thank you for joining us not only yesterday, but t today as well. Uh, Christina, do we have you? Hi, Chelsea. Yes, you do have me. Thank you. Um, it feels good to be back again. And um, I just want to thank you all who are joining us live to see a successful Ontario launch and sickness mission to the International Space Station. And uh, once again, as a Navajo woman, I'd like to wish you all a happy Native American Heritage Month as well. Christina, that's great. Uh, so launch is now set for uh, 4.32 a.m. Central Time towards the end of the window. Can you tell us about some of the milestones we can expect going up to countdown? Sure. So there's still um, some pre-launch milestones that are left. Um, right now we are currently at the tail end of the propellant loading operations. When that is complete, the team will uh, top off the propellant and do a, um, some fuel adjustments. Then um, you'll hear a final go, no go poll that you'll hear here soon. And that will be completed to proceed with the final countdown to launch. And then at about three minutes before launch, the auto sequencer will be initiated. This is uh, where Interior's internal flight computer takes over and commands the vehicle. So uh, the auto sequencer then goes through the final steps of prepping the vehicle for launch, and then we will proceed through the final countdown. And, uh, and Ops 1 and uh, LCP advise, I'm going to go ahead and forward these uh, steps to uh, both of you again. And Christina, what about post liftoff? What milestone should we expect for the Antares rocket? Uh, for Antares, the first milestone comes after the main engines burn for approximately 200 seconds and until main engine cutoff, which we'll hear on the nets as MECO. After MECO, we'll go into a short coast right before we separate stage one from stage two, which we call the upper stack of the interior vehicle. We'll continue then to coast for about 30 seconds or so before fairing separation, and then we will have an internal separation where the stage two flies out of the external upper stack. Once stage two is clear of the upper stack, stage two ignites for about two and a half minute burn or so, which puts Cygnus real close to the orbit, and then it'll coast to ensure everything is stable. Then Cygnus will be released into the desired orbit. After, after Cygnus is released, it will go through um, some more comms checks, then about an hour or hour and a half, we'll, uh, we separate, Cygnus will release its solar rays and be on its way to the ISS. So it takes Cygnus approximately nine minutes or so to get to orbit. Great, we're looking forward to it. And Christina, real fast, um, you had wished us a happy Native American Heritage Month. Um, we just covered some of the science that's on board the SS Sally ride, but something very special is also on board. Can you tell us a little bit about it? 
Yes, and um, as you mentioned, you know, the Hergerman names each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of, of substantial contributions to an individual who has substantial contribution to the United States uh, Space Program and Human Flight, Human Space Flight. And the Engine 18 mission is proud to commemorate Dr. Sally Wright, uh, who was the first female astronaut, astronaut who served on the crew of the second flight of Challenger. Um, she was definitely an advocate for diversity and equality in science, inspiring countless women and people of color to pursue STEM careers, including myself. And as an indigenous woman from the Navajo Nation, Dr. Sally Wright was someone I aspire to be like, and she definitely paved the way for other women like myself to be part of the aerospace industry and to not be afraid to chase your dreams, which is very important. That is what Dr. Sally Wright continued to do until her death to help inspire students, which brings me to the very special item. It is an American flag signed by all 402 students and staff from the Sally Wright Elementary School in Los Angeles, California, which was named by the neighborhood in Dr. Wright's honor. The school is 95% Hispanic and 5% people of color, and its vision and mission is the heart of Dr. Sally Wright's leg legacy. That's we wonderful to hear. Christina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're now in the five minute hold. As Christina said, there's many milestones that we'll be looking out for after launch. The first is main engine cutoff, also known as MECO, of the Antares first stage, about 3 minutes and 18 seconds after launch. About six seconds later, the first stage separates, so the first stage engine is turned off, it did its job, and the stage is discarded. About 30 seconds later, the fairing will separate. This is the shell that surrounds the Cygnus spacecraft during launch. LC, this is CMD, step 410. Cygnus is in launch mode and nominal. Copy that, CMD, check step 404. LC, TD, we're green. LC, copies. <clears throat> LC, this is LD, proceed. Ops 2, initiate evacuation of fuel cavities. And work. And opening VVP on my mark. 3, 2, 1, mark. 10, 20, 19. You're getting a live view of Northrop Grumman's flight control room. These folks are going to take control of Cygnus after spacecraft separation. Uh, they're keeping in constant communication with Mission Control in Houston and also the Range Control Center at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. This is where you'll hear a lot of the chatter um, as the countdown progresses. will be from this room right here at the Range Control Center. They've got eyes on the launch pad, the range, as well as safety of the vehicle before it launches. At this time, I'd like to proceed with final countdown poll. GSO. GSO, go. RSO. RSO, go. TD. T 
Lead East go. Prop lead. Lead East go. Stage one. Stage one is go. MES one. MES one is go. GCE. GCE is go. Ace. Ace is go. Mars. Mars is go. CMD. CMD go. LD. LD is go. NG. Northrop Grumman is proud to honor a renowned NASA astronaut and the first American woman in space, Dr. Sally Ride. Sally was a true space pioneer and also a tireless advocate for improving STEM literacy for children, especially young girls. Sally has inspired millions of students, and her legacy through Sally Ride Science continues to have enormous positive impact on STEM education across the nation. During her spaceflight missions, Sally was known to spend her free time gazing down at Earth Hence, it is an honor to return her legacy to space to once again enjoy the view as the SS Sally Ride and Northrop Grumman are go for launch. Go to proceed with final countdown. MES-1, do we have status on step two? LC, MES-1, evacuation verified. And ops two, terminate engine evacuation. And VVP is closed. 10, 21. And with 10 minutes planned until the T minus zero mark of 4.32.42 a.m. Central Time, the team has pulled their go for launch. Opening VZD on my mark and three, two, one, mark. 10, 2303. And Ace, LC, on countdown one. Go ahead, LC. Yeah, are steps 405 and 406 still not required? Stand by. Going back to some of the launch milestones that we're looking forward to today, um, as Christina was talking about, we were first looking for main engine cutoff, or MECO, uh, followed quickly after by first stage separation. Um, after that, the fairing will separate, exposing Cygnus, although it has not reached orbit yet at this stage. The second stage of Antares, a solid rocket motor, ignites for four minutes and seven seconds into the flight. Um, at this point, Cygnus will be 73 miles in altitude, and it'll burn for almost three minutes before stage two burnout, putting Cygnus into its initial orbit. LC elect one, ACS VDMs enabled, voltage nominal ODM commands. Then we'll look for payload separation, also known as spacecraft separation, meaning Cygnus is no longer attached to the spent second stage and is flying free to catch up to the International Space Station. All in all, it'll take nine minutes from the time of launch for Cygnus to reach this point. Copy. Is that a copy or confirm? Concur. Our coverage will end shortly after spacecraft separation, but Cygnus will begin to deploy its round solar rays about an hour and a half into its mission, or around 6, uh, 24 a.m. Central Time. Uh, around there. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll complete its solar de array deployment about 30 minutes later. Uh, we won't be in live coverage at this time, but be sure to look out for confirmation of the completion of solar array deployment on the blog and on social media. GNC1 provides status of trajectory file for launch operation. Are you ready for me to deactivate VCD? LC GNC1 uh, trajectory file is go. LC MES1 on countdown. VCD closed. Sorry, GNC-1, you got stepped on. LC GNC-1, uh, no trajectory file change is required. Uh, trajectory file 1 is good. Copy that. 408, not required. 409, not required. CMD report status of Cygnus. BRG deactivated. LC MES-1 on countdown. LC CMD good. Cygnus good. LC Ops 2 steps through Oscar 8 complete. Copy that. Oscar 8 complete. Ops 2 405, initiate fuel and let valve position override. In work. 
the astronauts aboard the space station are awake and well into their day, and they do have live views of this launch available to them. NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida have been preparing for, preparing for Cygnus's arrival all week. They've been reviewing and practicing their robotic capture maneuvers on a computer to simulate what it'll be like when the real spacecraft arrives in just two days. Cygnus will make an automated approach until it's about 30 feet from the station. Then Nicole Mann will command the robotic arm to capture Cygnus from the robotics workstation in the cupola, while Josh Cassida acts as her second set of eyes to monitor the approach. Ace, LC on countdown one. Go ahead, LC. Are 412 and 413 no longer required? 412 not required, 413 not required. LC, MUS2. Fuel inlet, vibe, fuel inlet valve position override status confirmed. Copy 406 complete. And prop lead, I got your call on 418. Ops 2 initialized ground ordinance power supplies. Ground ordinance power supplies initialized. Ground ordinance power supplies nominal. And 422 is not required. Ops 2 copies. Ops 1, transfer avionics to internal power. And work. This chatter that you're hearing is coming from the Range Control Center at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility as they move th through their countdown. You can think of it as mission control for the rocket before it leaves the ground. They're monitoring the procedures leading up to launch, which you're hearing now, monitoring weather systems, aircraft in the area, and are monitoring the safety of the situation in the unlikely event that the rocket veers off course or is acting off nominally. Another set of eyes. They're working really closely with the Cygnus Flight Control Center in Dulles, Virginia, as well as Mission Control here in Houston, under the direction of Flight Director Adi Bulos. At LC Elect 1, SNAs, ODMs, all armed. NASA TD, report range status. Range is green. And MES 1, can you confirm engine priming status is verified? Is it verified? Step 431 is not required. Phase three dynamic limits will be active at T minus three minutes. And launch team, despite uh, regulators, alarm clocks, and desiccant dryers running amok, we are on the schedule. FC commanded to flight mode. Auto sequence startup. Just under three minutes until launch, and everything is go for launch. Voltage and current nominal. Ops 2, switch to data. Uh, GNC 1, ver verify ready for nav mode. LC, GNC 1, or nav ready for nav. Ops 2, switch to nav. LC, Ops 2, switch to nav. LC, GNC 1, or nav telemetry verify. The teams opted to move to the end half of the five minute launch window with a new T minus zero time of 4.32.42 a.m. Central Time. T minus one minute, 30 seconds.
We're well into the terminal count with T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 30 seconds. Godspeed, Doug Harvey. T minus 10. Space Station. The first stage is performing norm nominally so far. One minute into the flight, no issues are being tracked with the Antares rocket. We are passing through max Q. The vehicle remains nominal. Antares is passing through max Q, the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. Power remains nominal. Passing through 50,000 feet. Attitude remains nominal. Passing through 5,000 feet per second. Core pressurization valves continue to function as expected. Engines remain nominal at 100% thrust. Approximately 100 seconds to Miko. Passing through 100,000 feet. Now at the two minute mark, everything is going as planned. You're hearing the Wallops Range Control Center reporting a good flight of the Antares rocket. Attitude. Core pressure station valves continue to function nominally. We have begun slow throttle down. Throttle down is the precursor to main engine cutoff. MIGO occurs at the 3 minute 18 second mark of the flight, followed right after by first stage separation. Coming up at the three minute mark, just seconds away from main engine cutoff. And main engine cutoff. Stage one separation. First stage separation confirmed from Wallops' range control center just as planned about six seconds after main engine cutoff. Less than 20 seconds to go until fairing separation to unveil the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. Good engine performance on stage one. Stage, stage to ignition in approximately 10 seconds. 
We have bearing separation. Bearing separation is confirmed. Cygnus is now outside of its protective shell and is continuing to climb into its preliminary orbit. Okay, we have stage two ignition. And with stage two ignition, the second stage engine will burn for about two minutes, 46 seconds. The stage two caster 30 XL motor will burn for approximately two and a half minutes. Attitude remains nominal. Stage two TVC is nominal. Electrical power remains nominal. Attitude is nominal. Coming up on the five minute mark of the flight with second stage burnout expected at the six minute 53 second mark of the flight. At the time of second stage burnout and orbital insertion, Cygnus will be at an orbital altitude of 109.5 miles or 176.2 kilometers. Stage two TVC is nominal, nominal power. Attitude remains nominal. Approximately 60 seconds remaining in stage two burn. Attitude remains nominal. Six minutes into the flight of Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket, under a minute now until stage two burnout and orbital insertion. Vehicle attitude remains nominal through stage two burn. Stage two TVC is nominal. Coming up on stage two burnout. We have stage two burnout. Beginning reorientation for payload separation. We have good insertion and Terry's currently in orbit and will coast for approximately 100 seconds prior to payload separation. Cygnus has reached its preliminary orbit insertion. Next, we'll be looking for Cygnus to separate from the second stage, which will occur at 8 minutes and 52 seconds after liftoff, about two minutes from now. Terry's power remains nominal during this coast. We're continuing to hear good call outs across the board. Everything is nominal at the stage of the flight. We're approximately 60 seconds from payload separation. Vehicle attitude remains nominal. Vehicle power remains nominal. Now eight minutes into the flight, Antares continues to perform nominally to put the SS Sally Ride Cygnus on its way to the International Space Station. Spacecraft separation is expected in less than one minute. Power remains normal. Approximately 30 seconds from payload separation. Series remains nominal. And we have payload separation of the Cygnus spacecraft. 
spacecraft separation is confirmed and Terry is launched at 4.32.42 a.m. Central Time, 5.32 a.m. Eastern at the end half of the launch window. At the time of launch, the International Space Station was flying over the Indian Ocean southwest of Australia. Okay, launch team, uh, let's maintain our discipline, close out the pad, proceed with our post-launch checklist. Step 448, prop one, could you get a status on pulse purging? I'll see prop one, first helium pulse purging cycle is complete. can see some celebration from the Range Control Center at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. Cygnus has successfully separated from the second stage of the Antares rocket, and at this time, operations of the vehicle will move to Dulles, Virginia, under the direction of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus Flight Controllers. The SS Sally ride has successfully moved through its milestones to get it into its preliminary orbit. It will spend the next two days catching up with the space station for a rendezvous and capture, followed by the installation of the vehicle to the Earth-facing port on the Unity module. You're looking at a live view of the Cygnus flight control room in Dulles, Virginia. This team is diligently working as they now have control of the Cygnus spacecraft now that it is in its preliminary orbit and separated from the Antares rocket. If you're just joining us, Northrop Grumman's 18th Commercial Resupply Services mission just launched from Launch Pad 0A at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, part of NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. Cygnus is carrying 8,200 pounds of scientific experiments, food, hardware, and supplies to the people living aboard the International Space Station. We highlighted a couple of the scientific experiments on board, um, but this Cygnus is also carrying a number of tools as well as hardware that our spacewalkers might use in future spacewalks. You can get a breakdown of what's on board now. Joining me here today to talk a little bit about the space station and this resupply mission is Jeff Arendt, manager of the Systems Engineering and Integration Office in the International Space Station Program. Jeff, do we have you? Loud and clear. Uh, good morning, Kelsey. Kelsey. 
Good morning. Uh, so, Jeff, this kicks off an extremely busy period for the space station with a series of upcoming spacewalks. How will today's Cygnus launch support those operations? Well, first off, uh, I have to say it was a spectacular launch, and I want to congratulate the entire team from Northrop Grumman with their Cygnus and Antares team to the spaceport to the cargo mission, cargo mission contract team who packed the cargo and the NASA team supporting this mission. Definitely, definitely a gorgeous launch, and we're happy that Cygnus is on its way to, to the ISS. As you mentioned, Cygnus is carrying some important spacewalk hardware. One critical set of hardware is what we call a mod kit, which is a collection of brackets that the crew will install outside while on the spacewalk that's currently planned for November 15th. The crew will partially assemble it inside. Um, just hold on a second here. Inside, and then they will... Uh, they will take it through the airlock and install it at the base of a solar array wing so that it can be a support structure for a future set of rollout solar arrays. So there's direct support of the spacewalk with the hardware they will use, but there's also some indirect support. Cygnus will be bringing up some food treats for the crew, so indirectly supporting the operations with some much-deserved much deserved treats for the crew. They will have their usual menu, but they will also have some special requests like peanut butter, olives, several cheeses, and even pumpkin spice cappuccino. And the team has loaded some fresh fruit as well, apples, blueberries, oranges, and some ice cream in the freezers, chocolate and vanilla, and some of the special flavors that the crew has requested. So, good times. Jeff, that sounds awesome. And you were just talking to us about the numerous U.S. and Russian spacewalks that are coming up before the end of the year. Um, but that's not the only thing the flight controllers have their eye on in mission control. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's on the horizon for the rest of the year? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So for the next few weeks, the team will be very busy with visiting vehicle arrivals at ISS, science being conducted, and the seven upcoming, upcoming spacewalks. Uh, the arrival of NG-18, uh, as well as a SpaceX mission later this month, will have the flight control team and the crew busy getting the space station in configuration for the berthing and docking and for the thousands of pounds of cargo transfers that the crew will be doing. We have a lot of science that needs activating and tending to, uh, to quickly after it arrives. Uh, there are numerous payloads that fall into this category of needing immediate attention. U.S. payloads, as well as international payloads from our European and Japanese colleagues. And with the three U.S. and four Russian spacewalks in the same time frame, the ground team is very cap very carefully managing the crew's time. And it's really not that easy trying to juggle as many tasks as that, that, that we were, that were planning to be doing. So a very busy time on the ground and on board. Having said that, we are hoping to be able to uh, give the crew and much of the team the Thanksgiving holiday off and back to the food team food theme. The crew will have holiday food available to help celebrate and take a short break. Also, something something else this month we have is the Artemis mission. The targeted launch date is November 14th, and the teams are working to make sure ISS, SpaceX, and Artemis coordinate shared assets and can all complete our missions uh, without issues. So Cygnus is expected to arrive at the space station on Wednesday, November 9th, with a rendezvous and capture early in the morning. Uh, you were just ta talking to us about the crew members on board. Can you tell us a little about the milestones that we should expect went for Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, but before that even, the, the Northrop Grumman team will deploy the Cygnus solar rays and conduct a series of burns using Cygnus thrusters to get the vehicle closer to the station. The space station team will be getting um, will be getting ready as well, putting the ISS solar arrays in a good orientation for the Cygnus approach. Cygnus will arrive, will arrive in the vicinity of ISS, and then it will go through a series of holds and what I call resumes to methodically get closer and closer to the station, and then it will remain steady for its capture. Astronaut Nicole Mann will be driving the Canadian arm for for the capture, which is planned for at around 4.05 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday. So get assistance from Josh Casada with cameras and procedures as she maneuvers the arm to reach out and grapple with Cygnus. The crew, of course, had ground training on monitoring the Cygnus as it approaches and with the Canadian arm operation. But the crew has also been preparing on board the station with simulations and actual movements of the arm in practice sessions. After capture, our, our ground control team will berth Cygnus to the Node-1 uh, Unity module, 
And then after berthing, the crew will open the hatches, which should be done around noon Houston time on Wednesday. Uh, the team in space, as well as on the ground, have practiced all these activities and are, and are ready to go. Jeff Aaron, thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. So that's what this is all about, the continuous research contributions made in microgravity and assisting our astronauts who make it happen. We heard about some of the science on board. We heard about the mod kit launching on Cygnus for a November 15th spacewalk. And we even heard about the peanut butter and pumpkin spice cappuccino heading their way. To recap today's events, an Antares rocket launched from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia at 4.32 a.m. Central, 5.32 a.m. Eastern uh, towards the end of the launch window while the station was flying over the Indian Ocean. It brought the SS Sally Ride, a Cygnus cargo spacecraft out of Northrop Grumman, into its preliminary orbit. And while we won't cover this event live, the next major milestone for the spacecraft is to deploy its solar arrays. Two days from now, on Wednesday, November 9th, Cygnus will arrive at the orbiting laboratory. Our coverage of rendezvous and capture begins at 2.30 a.m. Central Time. Cygnus is expected to be robotically captured at the controls of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida around 4.05 a.m. Central. We'll continue on with live coverage of its installation to the space station, a job conducted by robotics controllers here in Houston. These ground controllers will bolt Cygnus into place on the Earth-facing port of the Unity module. Throughout the week, the astronauts on the space station will work to unload the cargo, and Cygnus is expected to stay bolted to the space station for about 2.5 months and it's until its departure, currently scheduled for January 2023. Thanks for joining. This is Mission Control.